Hey, welcome to What's the Fic, where two nerdy librarians, Gina and Meg, discuss everything from literature to movies, gaming, education, anime, manga, and more. All your favorite things that you get geeked about, we talk about. Plus, we give you tips on all the latest free resources from the library. So let's get into the fic of it. All right. Hello, everyone. This is What's the Fic? And we are Meg and Gina. And today we're going to be talking about Star Wars Reads Day. And we have a special guest with us on this episode today. We have Mr. Xavier Jones artist extraordinaire uh, who's going to be doing a lot of great things with the Star Wars Reads Day event this year. Can you please introduce yourself, Xavier? Uh, Yes. Uh, First of all, um, thank you and Georgina for having me. Um, My name is Xavier Jones. I I am an area artist in the CSRA, and I've been doing art here for over 30, maybe 40 years now. Mm -hmm. And um, I've, I've been a part of Star Wars Reads Day for about, I guess, maybe five different runs. Maybe. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. And nice. I've, I've been here for, for a while, but it, it's been a great ride every time we have it and every time we do it. The, the thing missing this year is with COVID, we can't really be together. So right. it's, it's mm. a little different this time around. Yeah, yeah. They've changed up um, a little bit of things last year and this year. But uh, this event has been happening at the library basically since 2012. That's when it was um, first started. And um, basically, just for our listeners to get into what is Star Wars Reads Day, um, usually it's a event that takes place every year, and it was designed to get patrons of all ages just into more literature and surrounding the franchise of Star Wars. So, um, like I said, we've been doing it here at the Augusta Richmond County Public Library System since 2012. Um, usually, we have a a lot of different events. Usually there's an art auction, there's cosplayers, um, also there's craft materials, and we invite authors um, sometimes to come and talk about any Star Wars related writings that they've done or any published books. And sometimes we even have special guests who've been in Star Wars films. So it's a pretty exciting event here. Um, but we're excited to get started with everything and just give everybody a little rundown of what's going to be happening. Um, now, by the time you listen to this episode, we're actually already going to be in the midst of <laughs> Star Wars Reads Day. <laughs> but Gina, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the events that are coming up for this event. Okay, sure. For those of you who've been um, with Star Wars Reads since the swing of the week, which it started October 9th, and it'll be going until the 15th. And here we are smack dab in the middle of the week. But hopefully you did get a chance to take an um, opportunity to um, be a part of the book giveaways that are happening all throughout the week, not just um, starting Saturday, but all throughout the week at all the locations in goodie bags and such. And oh, again, the silent auction that has popped up. Um, Monday, we had the story time that hopefully you watched on Facebook or the YouTube. And hopefully mm-hmm. you even participated in the cosplay that mm-hmm. happened on Tuesday. Now, if you just cannot get enough of Star Wars after you hear the podcast today, please make sure that you tune in for the Visions virtual movie night that we'll be having. So it's Star Wars Vision. Mm -hmm. Um, You will need to register or sign up on Facebook or Eventbrite. And you have to have a laptop, a Disney Plus account, um, Google Chrome, all the web things, and the (laughs) teleparty extension to to participate but all that information is going to be up on our website so Mm -hmm. and you have hours after this release to kind of get everything together so you can join (laughs) us um and thursday on october 14th that's when we'll have the inside the galactic studios with our author of this year which is emma mieko kondo kandon excuse me and we're going to be talking about ronin a visual novel that's going to be again on Thursday at 5.30. So make sure you go look on the website, take advantage of all the great things that are going on um, and taking a part of this special event. 
Yes. Yeah, uh, we're excited to get into every event that's going on. But I just want to ask, first of all, Xavier, do you have a favorite event that happens at Star Wars? Like, what do you look forward to when you get ready for Star Wars Reads Day? Well, it's it's really kind of hard because being an artist, your whole complete um, mission is to basically be part of the artist row section. And, mm-hmm. and basically, if you're a one-person operator, you man that table no matter what happens. So you spend most of your time at that table. But you do have this need to go, oh, what, are, what books are they reading? Who's who, what, what particular orchestra is playing what in the background? What school's playing this year? What is the parade going to look like? What, what type of, you know, commissions are going on? There's things going on so much that mm-hmm. you and you want to see, but you, you're commanding your table at that point in time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like with Star Wars, of course, we, we were going to talk about a little bit of the lore, get into the franchise a little bit, um, but just getting more so into your your personal art journey first before we get into that. Like, what inspired you to want to become an artist? Uh, honestly, it's the thing you all are talking about right now. You're, you're <laughs> discussing popular popular culture and books and stuff. I, I was a I was a avid reader back in the day, but I was big into comic books. I was mm-hmm. big into animation. I was big into movies. I was big into all of that. Mm-hmm. And I was one of those those African American kids in the '60s and '70s that mm-hmm. wanted to see more science fiction and wanted to see us mm-hmm. more in that process. So I I absorbed as mm-hmm. much as I could in that process. So when Star Wars broke out, that was like the thing. If, if you <laughs> Star Wars so unbelievably um, fantastically imaginative. Mm-hmm. That it, it surpassed anything any of us could ever imagine could happen, and so it changed movies, it changed lore, it changed everything. Yeah, I, I mean, it's such an influential franchise. I mean, um, I mean, there's a lot that's in, influenced Star Wars, uh, matter of fact, and we'll probably talk about that a little later right. here, but um, yeah, like you were talking about uh, the things that influence you, like reading, like what were you, what were you reading as a kid, like that inspired okay. you? like the most what um, titles lion witch in the wardrobe um oh nice um, Riglin time um the time machine hg wells war of the worlds um frankenstein um good grief um <laughs> there was a whole slew of these um macabre and and speculative storylines that were out at that point in time and i was reading as much as i could i remember mm-hmm. reading the, the the um secret of nim and in oh, my yeah. mind it's science fiction so uh, yeah. I enjoyed that as well. Um, it, just a number of, of things that made me think outside the box. I was reading mm-hmm. at that point, especially like, well, I think what really did it for me was probably Lord of the Rings. Oh, wow. Okay. At that point, you know, it, it's, a, it's a heavy read, but when you're reading The Hobbit, it's a kid's book. But when you see the animation in conjunction with the book, the world just explodes around you. I, I remember watching the animation after reading the mm-hmm. book and Five Armies? You can have five armies fighting at once. Is that possible? <laughs> so your whole brain just explodes going, I can do stuff. What does that yeah. look like? How do you paint that? So th- there you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know you said you've been with us at Star Wars Reads for about five years now, right? Mm-hmm. That's incredible. How did you even first get started with um, Star Wars Reads here with the Augusta Library? Well, I, well, I should I should divulge a, a, a truism here first. <laughs> I used to be an employee of the library at one point. Oh, okay. Nice. I, I, I was a resident artist for about two or three years, maybe four tops. Oh, wow. And that was at the old site before they before they built the new site. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we're talking back when I was back in high school, probably <laughs> just going in high school at that point in time. But okay. it was a great job to have. I got into the archives, got into the books and everything. But once I had left and did everything I wanted to do, military-wise, college-wise, and everything else, um, I got deep into the arts and CSRA, and you know, if you're in that network, there are people looking for artists that are going to be in artist row. And mm-hmm. you know, I, I pretty much worked every art venue in the city for about 30 years. I, oh. I, it's like first nobody in the city I don't know at this point. So oh. when the all call came out to do um, artist row for for the library, I was like, sure, uh, I'm an art, uh, I'm an art fan, I'm an I'm a science fiction fan and nothing's bigger than Star Wars. Let's, let's do this. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's pretty cool, though. Like, so you're like a fellow alum, basically. Right. <laughs> you're yeah. one of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, we, we were talking about, you know, sci-fi and everything. 
and we were talking about your influences, you know, what might have influenced you. But, like, other than Star Wars, is there any other, like, major sci-fi, maybe in literature or in the media, um, that's oh, had, like, a profound effect on you? I, I don't know where to start with that. It, it, I, I, I should say everything, but <laughs> the truth is, I mean, there's so many books and magazines. I would go to the library. Literally yeah. go to the library and sit for hours going through periodicals, movie periodicals, mm -hmm. stuff on books, comic books, historical information on artists that will produce these things. Uh, um, what's it? Industrial Light and Magic and George Lucas. I, I was there. I lived there. It was my, it was my home. And, and as far as books are concerned, um, good grief. And, and sci-fi titles. Mm -hmm. Good grief. Um, I'm a big Godzilla fan. I, oh, I've always yeah. been a Toho Godzilla fan. And anything that had to do with kaijus and monsters, dinosaurs, mm -hmm. Jurassic Park, mm -hmm. anything that had to do with, with Michael Crichton, um, oh, yeah. the, the Andromeda Strain, all of that stuff was into that. Big, huge science fiction movie buff. Big, huge science fiction book buff. Mm -hmm. So if you're H.G. Wells, Isaac Asimov, oh, yeah, nice. I'm, I'm there. Yeah. Frank Herbert, I'm there. And so there wasn't anything that wasn't science fiction oriented that didn't either fall into the area of either a, a action or fall into fantasy or fall into heavy science that I yeah. was not a part of. I, it, it was If it was on, I was watching it. Battlestar Galactica, I was watching it. It was, nice. was going to always be there. And books, if the books came out in any mm -hmm. form or fashion, no matter how small or big it was, I was looking mm -hmm. through it. Oh, awesome. See, that just goes to show for our listeners out there, the library is where it's at. You yes. need to be in a library. It's somebody's well, library. You need a card. <laughs> if, if, I, if I can chime in on that, yeah. um, from an artist's perspective, the thing I learned as an artist was if you really want to build worlds, mm -hmm. you have to first read about them and experience them. Mm -hmm. And if you can't experience them firsthand, a book is the best next thing. And so you get a chance to pick up encyclopedias and see new places. You 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 concoct new alternate universes based upon things that you see and know. And then you read periodicals or read books and read you know stories from authors that that mm -hmm. offer different points of view on on the take of them. My, my my big thing is nowhere to forecasting. It's it's yeah. it's the whole um, thing that drives science fiction. What does the future look like? What will cloth be in the twenty twenty fourth century? What will food look like in the twenty fifth century? That mm -hmm. kind of thing. And so mm -hmm. anything that could be read or, or extrapolated from either the point of view of another artist, another author, or a director or whatever, mm -hmm. gave foresight for ideas and basically helped fuel my imagination. I was going to say, so like, what do you think are like some of your favorite things to draw or to illustrate? Like when you're thinking about expanding that world, you know, you're talking about world building, which I love. I love a book, any kind of book well, with good world building or anything like that. So what do you do? This that? is a little tricky for me because I'm a historian buff, too. Uh, nice. I love history. Yay. And, history and, buff and, unite. Yeah. <laughs> and so being African-American, I didn't see much of us in the science fiction. And I was like, what does this world look like with, you know, aliens that look like us? What does mm -hmm. that look like? What is the politics of that? How does people deal with that when a ship opens up and someone walks off a ship that looks like somebody from, you know, Mississippi or Augusta, Georgia or some other mm -hmm. place? Mm -hmm. And, and what, what will be the ramifications of that? And so I would write from that perspective. I would look for stories from that perspective or try to, to look at things from that standpoint. I'm a big um, extraterrestrial fan. I, I like d drawing mm. extraterrestrial worlds, building mm. different kinds of economies, thinking about what kind of, of biosystems and bio events that people live in, what kind of, of R and X or, or Z and X or, or, or X and A um, uh, uh, genetics are we dealing with and how will that affect our biosphere mm. and the way we operate? That kind yeah. of thing. Ooh. Yeah, that's very intensive. I, I mean, that's like if you think about like the world of Star Wars, that's very fleshed out. Uh, those thoughts need to kind of happen in order for you to create something like like a Star Wars franchise. Um, and like I said, we we're gonna get into a little more of that in just a little bit. Um, but um, you know, of course, we did a little bit of research just to see you know a little bit of your art online, and um, I did visit your your Instagram page. Yes. There. And I notice in your bio, it says, um, did you have the perfect storm enrichment center? Um, can you talk a little bit about that? Um, it, it's, we, we haven't really been operating since COVID has started because it's been kind of a, 
a, a crazy structure, but yeah, we, mm. we created Perfect Storm uh, uh, probably back in, in 2014 and, mm. and ended up running by 2015 as an enrichment center. We had a program at, at EDS where we ran, where we worked with kids after school and any kid that was in from any other school could come in and mm -hmm. work in our program. And we would work with them from their skill sets from where they were to build their art skills up. And we figured mm. that might be for a great business. So the term perfect storm was creating um, um, oper or operations, but creating opportunities mm -hmm. for people. So when they walk through the door, they would want for nothing. It's like, do you need mm -hmm. art supplies? We got that. Do you need paper? We got that. Do you need advice on where to go? We have a connective uh, network you can go to. We got that. So mm -hmm. our whole thing was creating a perfect storm environment for them to be conducive for basically learning art. We yeah. wanted to remove, we wanted to remove as much of the 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 fear and mm -hmm. and and the the. the the, the terrifying notion of, of drawing something away from them and create, mm -hmm. you know, conducively creative courage for them. Nice. That sounds like an awesome opportunity. And I'm hoping, you know, once, um, you know, we, we get in a better spot with, with the pandemic that we'll, you know, see more of Perfect Storm Art Enrichment Center because we'd love to collaborate with you guys for sure here at the library. Um, but um, getting, fun. yeah, definitely. Um, Getting back to what we were kind of saying with uh, Star Wars here, though, um, I just wanted to know, like, is there any upcoming work that you could maybe give us a little hint, hint that we, you know, <laughs> our listeners might want to see when they come visit, you know, the artist alley um, and kind of like look at the auction that's going to be going on online? Is there any art that, you know, you want to give us a little hint at, at what what's upcoming? What can we look forward to art wise? Well, I I can't speak for the other artists. I can only speak for myself, but I, right. I know I've been tapped to, to do the print this year. So I'm, I'm doing a print for the, for the Star Wars Reese Day and for mm -hmm. the library. And I, I had to make some changes on it. Matter of fact, I'm working on the changes as we speak right now. Oh, awesome. um, I, I had a logo for it I had to change with in order to make it look a little bit more presentable. And now that it's done, I'm going to be sending it off to them. They'll be making prints and then I got to mm -hmm. sign in, sign in date those. So, but, that's one um, item I was putting out there. I'll, I'll let the image be the surprise because okay. I, I think I put my back into this. Um, very seldom do I ever get a piece of work that I really want to want to get into and, and put my my energy into. But you know, it's the pandemic's been kind of really rough on everybody, and mm -hmm. schedules been rough on everybody. So finding your inner twelve year old can be a bit rough mm -hmm. trying to make that work. So yeah. once you plug into your inner twelve year old, they're like, "Wow, I'm back here again. Han Solo and all of them are cool again." Mm -hmm. you, you get lost in the work, and it shows. And mm -hmm. this piece, I think, pretty much does that. Um, mm -hmm. My my goal is to. So, honor reading, my goal is to honor the libraries, but I also want to do it with the intent of sparking imagination from the hyper creativity that's on the page of these characters mm -hmm. reading a book. Awesome. That sounds like we are looking forward to seeing it. So as we said before, definitely look out for that print. You can come by the libraries to pick up your prints starting next week. So, uh, any of our listeners, if you're wanting to see some Star Wars art and look at some great artists, then come by, see what's going on with the artist auction for Star Wars Reads Day. Now, um, I do want to say, is there any advice you would give to younger artists? I know we've talked kind of a little bit about everything that they could be doing to get into art, whether it's reading, coming to the library to study, um, you know, tapping into their inner 12 year old, <laughs> you know, whether they're adults or really are 12 or younger. Um, but is there any advice that you would like to share with younger artists or just any artists in general who want to pursue that field, maybe as a career or just as a hobby too? I, I would, I would start with, with the, the, the very thing that Perfect Storm does. And, and that is creative courage. Um, our, mm. our thing is always be to pick up a pencil and get a sketch pad or a sketchbook and literally just go for it. We, we, there's such an incredible weight of responsibility to render something. The minute you pick up a pencil and go to a sketchbook to draw something, it's like the world is looking at you and you're on the stage and you're expected to dance in front of billions of people. Mm -hmm. And it, it, while it isn't that, it feels that way. And that stress does tend to you know, hit people, whether they're professional, semi-professional, or novices mm -hmm. in that process. Mm -hmm. I would say to them that creative courage is the way to go the resilience you have in making the attempt you know failure is not a bad thing if you mm -hmm. fail at something it means you attempted and if you mm -hmm. attempted you did something and that's more than what most people will do in a day 
So mm. my thing would be pick up a pencil, draw what you can to the best your ability, draw what you see to the best of your ability, and try to emulate. We, we have a basic rule about um, basically imitation, duplication, and innovation. Those mm. are the three categories you need in order for you to build a good practice for a talent or for a skill set. And so you start mm. by knowing something that you enjoy and let that motivate you to draw it, then you want to duplicate it to the point where it looks identical. And eventually you want it to, to create such a passionate uh, a skill set inside of you that you can now start innovating things outside of it. And so mm. in, order, in order to get to that, you have to attempt first. You have to be willing to be brave enough to pick up paints, pick up a pencil, pick up a sketchbook. Um, it, it doesn't have to be anything spectacularly large. Mm -hmm. A simple face. Uh, uh, um, a smile, it could be a bird, it could be, you know, landscapes, trees, just something, and then build on it, mm. primarily. Yes, that's really great advice. I think that's great life advice, yeah. <laughs> if anybody's listening. <laughs> uh, just try, yeah, I, I love that, I love that. I felt inspired to do something other than my stick figures and flowers. <laughs> <laughs> there you Honestly, go. I will tell you, your stick figures are probably the the the, the bones, literally, of whatever you're going to do. <laughs> All you need to do is flesh them out and see what happens. Yeah, I might try that. Yeah, that's really great advice. Okay, well, we we do have some things on Star Wars that's going on, so I definitely want to ask you, like, what is your favorite Star Wars film, or maybe it was a TV show or possibly even a book do you have like a favorite from the franchise um i i think the as far as the book is concerned um i think it was what was it um was it needle the mind's eye i can't remember the title of the book but it, it was it was a uh was one of the first novels they added to the original first three movies mm -hmm. and that was interesting to get an inside of, of both leia and 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 luke um, trying to to make make peace with their force because wow. if, if, if people know the lore enough, they know that that Leia could be a Jedi if she wanted to be, but she chooses not to be, yeah. and so she she has the power, and it, it, it's it's really cool in that sense that she could do that. Now, as far as the movies are concerned, the big three are going to always be favorites for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, four, five, and six are basically canon from there. And from there, everything that adds on to it becomes very much interesting from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen a lot of stuff as of late because of the whole way that things have been going with with, with streaming. I haven't been able to get all of, all of mm -hmm. Disney's, uh, Disney Plus's streaming to see what's mm -hmm. going on with The Mandalorian. So that yeah. would be surprising when I see that for the first time. But I'm looking forward to seeing it. Yeah. And as far as the newer movies... Uh, I'm more excited to to see what happens with the the newer shows they're putting like The Mandalorian. So I feel yeah. like they're more more they feel more like canon than the mm -hmm. actual newer movie did. And uh, the animation that's coming out, the new animation from oh, the yeah. Anime, yeah, I am looking forward. I'm as you know, I don't know yeah. if I said it, but uh, anime and me and and manga yes. are like yes, yes, we. DNA. Yeah, yeah, we, we definitely want to ask you about that too there because um, all of us here are definitely big fans of anime. I think um, with Star Wars, Georgina Gina is a little bit on the, you know, maybe that's not my thing, cup of tea, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> for, for some reason, every time we do an episode, we always come back to anime. That's always yeah, a tie-in yeah. with us. Um, but yeah, like you were saying with that new series, um, Star Wars Visions, um, mm -hmm. I think that came yeah. out on the 22nd of September. So um, they're going to be... Break. I will break. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I was sorry. just going to say that they, they are going to be um, showing an episode if you have you know access to Disney Plus and everything um, for this upcoming week. Later on, I think Today, once you hear the episode, I think they're going to be doing the streaming party for that just mm -hmm. to you know, get into seeing how everybody loves it. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's I'm a big anime fan. I grew up in Hawaii and we used to watch anime from Japan mm -hmm. in the heyday back in the 60s and from yeah. stuff from the 50s was coming out back in those days. So I grew up with it from its original inception. And oh. so... Basically, I can tell you the history of anime from from right around probably the 30s going forward. Oh wow! And and so when people start talking about anime, it's like, dude, this literally is in my blood. This is when we first did Perfect Storm. That yeah. was the basis by which we had everybody because our program was based primarily on, on anime and manga. Nobody oh. in the area, area would teach it, let alone have an African American teach it well. Mm -hmm. And so we were smitten by it. Everything I had, I, I had one of the largest collections and still have one of the largest collections of anime in oh, wow. in in um in, in augusta 
And oh. my whole thing was to basically look at the books. And, and I don't know if people know this or not, mm -hmm. but anime and Star Wars has its roots in books and, and, and what's going on with libraries. There's no way George Lucas could have created what he had created had he had not had the research to put it together. And he used things that came out of the library to, to basically make it work. And in Japan, with manga and anime, the thing that makes anime and manga work is mm -hmm. its cheap um, um, component, which is writing. Mm -hmm. And writing and, and books are like massively big with Japanese. So mm -hmm. their thing is, if you want a good anime, you need a good story. Yeah. That's true. That is very true. And I'm glad and, and you mentioned that. Yeah. It, it, it is one of those things where they have, they have won, if I'm correct, if you look it up, they have mm -hmm. won like, like, if not half, three fourths of all the Nebula Awards now between them mm -hmm. and the Chinese. Mm -hmm. They're winning all the Nebula Awards for all the breakthrough science fiction and technology in their mm -hmm. writing. They made writing, when they were building their country back up, they made writing the number one thing they needed to get done in order to catapult the nation. Mm, yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. I didn't know that, um, but I'm I'm so glad you like mentioned that um, those two forces go together: Star Wars and anime, and and you know Japanese culture and the art. Because um, we actually we're gonna do a little bit on on how those two connected. Because um, in my research, you know, I was kind of like looking up things, and I was seeing that George Lucas um, was inspired by a Japanese film called The Hidden Fortress. Um, I have that. You do? Wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, and, and we actually have it here, too, at the library. So if anybody was is interested in checking it out, you can definitely check it out from ARC PLS Libraries. And, of course, any of the Star Wars films or books, those are all available, too. But, yeah, um, I, I didn't know that those two kind of went hand in hand. I could see the influence oh. of, like, samurai culture, yeah, the history. That's, yeah, the symbol that. that they – I don't mean to get you off, but the symbol that mm -hmm. they have for, like, the – um. The Empire is mm -hmm. a legitimate Japanese symbol. Really? Yeah. I had no clue. <laughs> if, you see, wow. if you see the movie, if you see uh -huh. the movie, you will see it on the flags in the movie. Oh, yeah, that's a good fact to know because I definitely did not <laughs> know that. Like, I knew for the most part, like, um, I think like with Jedi's and the Apprentice, you know, you have like the Jedi Master, who I guess would be kind of like the equivalent of a samurai. And then you have like the apprentices, mm -hmm. um, but there's some terms there too. I think that were used senpai and kohai. Yeah, kohai. Gina, mm -hmm. please give us a little term <laughs> cleanup because <laughs> this is our turn up term cleanup queen here. Okay, so term cleanup <laughs> real quick. Uh, senpai is referring to a member. Um, usually of some type of organization or in society who is they are the elder as far as experience goes um, maybe level maybe age um, and their job essentially is to like assist and to counsel those who are new and inexperienced and that's the cool height um, and that relationship I think a lot of times we see it um, for those who engage in anime and manga you'll see it a lot in the school setting where mm -hmm. you know there's senpai he's the upperclassman or they are the upperclassmen and then you have the kohai and you know they they don't call them kohai <laughs> the, right. the younger refers to the elder as a that's a respect thing to say senpai so mm -hmm. that's that's where that is and then they in turn give all you know that respect and gratitude for being you know for that person taking out time to mentor them so that mm -hmm. mentor mentee relationship that's what's signified by senpai which is the upper classman or the mentor and then kohai which is the mentee Mm. Yeah, if I if I may chime in, sure. the, the 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 senpai title is a title that is coveted, and you are not to damage that title in mm. any sense, mm. because being someone who's leadership like that, you are expected to carry the line and be mm. the sheer example. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we we got those term cleanups there. We always <laughs> do a little bit of that in each episode, just in case we refer to something somebody may be unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. So we try to explain. But uh, yeah, you can definitely see that as as a huge influence in um, George Lucas's work on yes. in the first trilogy and just throughout the franchise of Star Wars. Any you know through the whole thing, um, there's a lot of Japanese influence there. But um, you. Um, go ahead, go ahead. I would challenge um, people to come into the library and find that movie. It's mm. Hidden Fortress. 
And there's a uh, Seven Samurai, which is equally equally as good. Those two were heavy influences, both mm. done by Kira Kurosawa. Very mm. good formats for both George Lucas and Spielberg. Um, mm. Wow, the the influences are awesome. But I will say this: the mm. the uh, um, the influence of both Leia and Luke came from that movie. And mm. Luke wasn't supposed to be a brother; he was supposed to be a twin sister. Oh, really? Whoa. Oh, wow. So that was like probably the first treatment of Star Wars, <laughs> and then they probably <laughs> later changed it or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Nice, nice. Well, just just to go in a few minutes, we want to take a few minutes just to go into anime, just a little bit. Of course, this is a Star Wars influence episode, but we always <laughs> have to have a little bit of anime in there, as I said earlier. So, um, what is your favorite anime? Do you have one? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm a sorry. top five or something? <laughs> yeah, top five, right? <laughs> you're, talking, you're talking decades and it's hard to choose. Um, oh my gosh. I have to choose between literally what is in this period. Um, I'm a big fan of Ghost in the Shell. I'm a big fan mm, of, yes. of, of that. Yeah. I'm a big fan of the Maycross saga. And I feel like it's the backbone of that, that of, of what anime was back in the uh, early 80s and, and late mm -hmm. 70s, it catapulted anima, anime into everyone's household. So it mm -hmm. becomes a cornerstone in itself. And then you got um, Studio Ghibli with- um, Oh, yes. With, uh, oh gosh, I cannot say his name. He'll kill me, I can't say his name at the moment. Um, Miyazaki? Miyazaki. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Ayo Miyazaki. <laughs> he, he um, oh my gosh, the man's a genius. Mm -hmm. Sheer genius. His yeah. ability to write his, I mean, he's probably the last auteur that does anime or animation period on mm. the planet. He, yeah. he can write, he can, he can uh, direct, he can illustrate, he can pretty much write music. He can do all of it really. Mm -hmm. But he, he handpicks all of his people to, to do his movies. And when he handpicks them, he doesn't pick them from Japan alone. He picks the top animators from the planet. Mm to come in and make these movies. And when he's done, he just bangs them and builds a new crew, which is why each movie is is, is awesome unto itself. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. Love Studio so, so you get me started in anime and manga, <laughs> I, I, man. I know, we'll have to invite you back for another episode yes. where we do exclusively anime related things. <laughs> you have to give us a history rundown so we yes. can oh, definitely goodness, compare it. I would not know where to start. It'll be great. So much of it. <laughs> <laughs> it would it would be it, it, I love where it's going now. I love the fact that we're seeing Star Wars being done with it and we're seeing anime beginning to blend into a lot of the American culture. We're seeing a lot mm -hmm. of Marvel stuff and DC mm -hmm. stuff being done with it. We're seeing a lot but the thing I love the most about anime and manga is the same thing I like about the library. The mm -hmm. library has this unique ability. If you go in, you pick up any book and read it and figure out what's going on. What I love about anime is and manga is there is no subject that mm -hmm. they can do and put into a book that they don't make interesting in writing. Yeah. Um, one of, you know, there are some animes that I wouldn't recommend for some people to see because there, there are, are, are issues that may pop up people may have issues with, but at the end of the day, the writing is still top notch. One of my favorites mm -hmm. is Food Wars. Yes. Food Wars. Yes. Food Wars is totally <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Um, oh, and, and then there was um, oh, the one with, with, the, with the blood works. I forgot what it was called. Uh, Cells at Work. Oh, yes, we're talking about we're, that soon. Yep, that's coming at the end of the month. <laughs> doctors or in doctors November. signed on to that one. It was so good. Mm -hmm. And so the, the truth is, anime and manga is written so well, it, it, they can write it for anyone's basic life. Uh, adults will watch it because yeah. it, it, it's the stride with them. And so now there's a big debate going on about why they're trying to do a live action version of Cowboy Bebop because oh, yeah. it, it is in his essence Cowboy Bebop being an anime is trying to sell the idea through its medium for what it is making it live action kind of defeats the purpose and mm. I, I don't mind doing it live action it'd be interesting if we could do it it's part of our culture in America but mm. I would like them to to at least expand on Cowboy Bebop as an animation in mm. the states and get people to look at it from its standpoint and accept it for what it is yeah mm. That's a good point. Yeah, it's true. It's one of the classics. It's it's definitely it was definitely one of some of my first um, experience with anime was Cowboy Bebop. So that's interesting that you brought wow. that up. And we, in my little group, we definitely have been <laughs> discussing that as well. So that's interesting that you brought that up. <laughs> Yeah. It is it is a cornerstone, and the writer that does it is a major cornerstone for it. The latest thing he came out with was um, a singing anime. Um, I forgot what it's called. It was with a, an African American singer and a Caucasian singer. Carolyn oh. Tuesday. I, I, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> Carolyn Tuesday. It's Carolyn Tuesday. Yes, Carolyn Tuesday. There you go. That is tied directly to Cowboy Bebop. Mm. 
Really? Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. He's in the same universe. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Because I, I watched the anime a couple months ago on Netflix. <laughs> now yeah. I know. That's awesome. It, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I'm very passionate about it with science fiction. Because I think they go mm -hmm. synonymously together very easily. Mm -hmm. um, and the writing becomes very big thing. That's the thing I had, had, had to learn over the past few years is how to translate images into words and words mm -hmm. into images. Mm -hmm. And if you're gonna you're gonna say a thousand words, you're gonna make it. You know, you're gonna make an image that ma matches that, and vice versa. And mm -hmm. so Japan understood that, and they broke their necks at producing items that make it interesting. So if they got an anime about fly fishing, know that it's gonna be good because they're gonna present it in a way you're gonna be like, "Wow, I didn't know that about fly fishing. When did mm -hmm. that happen?" They make it interesting always. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, this has been a really, really good episode. I think we've touched on a lot of good things, not just with Star Wars, but with art and culture and reading and literature and how influential that can be. Um, but yeah, I just, first of all, thank you, Xavier, for coming on yeah. and letting us interview you. We appreciate it so much. And this was so great much. to hear. Um, I enjoyed I, it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we'll definitely have to have you back because uh, we've got some more anime in us. And I think we need to hear, you know, all of your knowledge about anime through the years. So that would be great if we can have you back in the future. Yes. I'm going to put this I'm going to put this out there. There needs to be like a forum. There needs and I mean, like a, an actual face to face forum when like come when we're COVID's no longer the big issue anymore. We, mm -hmm. we need to sit down and actually have like a a. a, 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 a a jaw and draw or whatever, and just oh, yeah. discuss play a movie and discuss it at length. Yeah. Mm, that'd be great. Never know. That, that. Yeah, that might be a future library program. Fingers so crossed. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. Um, but is there anything you want to leave off uh, with us today? Maybe if you want to tell the listeners, hey, you know, come to Star Wars Reads Day or maybe where they can look for your art, possibly locally, if there's our local listeners. Uh, I would say um, definitely, definitely um, check out all the venues and all of, of the the options being offered at, from the library on Star Wars Three Days. It's one of our biggest events, and we love it to death. And we like to have more people join as much as possible mm -hmm. to be a part of that. It, it, it means so much to the library. It means so much to us to have that done. As far as my art's concerned, I, I'm in the process of. of really redoing a number of things. I'm getting ready to put out a few books. I'm trying to get a few projects turned in. I've got a bigger project I'm working on for a mural at the moment. So I'm trying to get as much done as possible for the end of the year is out. But mm -hmm. starting as of next year, I will be putting my work back out there again. You'll start seeing it. And hopefully it'll be in, in galleries and at the library and other places. We'll see. Awesome. That sounds great. So you guys heard it here first. You can look out for all of these Star Wars things that are happening. We're already in the midst of it this week by the time you're listening to this. Um, so don't forget the events that we mentioned earlier that are happening the rest of this week. Um, we're going through October 15th. So you can drop by the library to pick up some to-go crafts. There's going to be some giveaways if you participate in some of the in-person events. Um, and also there's, of course, the Artist Alley and the Solid silent auction so please visit our website arcpls.org in order to find out what's going on with star wars reads day all week long uh, again we just want to thank you xavier jones he has been a great pleasure to have on our podcast this week so we hope you guys enjoyed listening and we will talk to you next time bye, bye. Thank you for listening. Tune in for new episodes every second and fourth Wednesday of the month. If you like hanging with your friendly nerdy librarians, follow our library on Facebook at ARCPLS or on Instagram and Twitter at AugustaGALIB. Like we always say, we've got the fix, so stick with us. <laughs> <laughs>